Hello and welcome to Thoughts Per Episode, The Last of Us Edition. That's right, I've come around. I've come from my old man yells at cloud opinion to seeing all of the extremely high praise the show is getting and I am going to watch it. Even though apocalyptic stuff triggers my anxiety like nothing else. No, it was seriously a really bad idea for me to watch this at 1am last night. I could not sleep for hours. <laughs> oh god, my poor brain. Why do I do this to you? Okay, so to recap a bit, um, my old man yells at Cloud opinion about The Last of Us has always been, if you're going to make a video game adaption of something, perhaps do not make a video game adaption of a cinematic narrative video game because you are literally missing the point. However, important caveat, I've never played The Last of Us, so this show... Uh, as an aside, this show is my first time experiencing this story. I owned a PS3 and a PS4, um, but I've never been that interested by The Last of Us because zombie stuff doesn't really do it for me. Shut up, they are zombies. I don't care what they're called. I don't care that it's mushroom infested stuff. I don't care that they're called clickers. They're zombies. They act like zombies. They're zombies. Sorry I told you to shut up. Anyway, um, yeah, I've, I've just been hearing nothing but praise about this show for so long that I'm just like, fine. And I have a very generous friend, because I mentioned on Twitter, I guess I'll watch it next time House of a Dragon is on, because I'm not getting Now TV for this. Uh, and a very generous friend just gave me their login, so thank you so much. Please do not feel any sense of responsibility for me not being able to sleep until four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Animal Crossing music helped. And I guess before I move on too far from that, I will mention, uh, when I say anxiety, I am actually looking into getting some therapy for anxiety. So I'm not just, like, memeing about, like, oh, no, it makes me worried. No, it, it really does make me worried. If I had to describe it, um, I would say I get so immersed in the atmosphere of the show that I have trouble separating the feelings that the show gives you from real life and I then transpose those feelings onto things that could happen to make real life like that world. I actually had this problem with Fallout 4 which is a much less hard-hitting bleak world but if I had that trouble with Fallout 4, damn right I'm gonna have this trouble with The Last of Us. So join me as I torture myself uh, for the sake of Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. Also, I did watch Chernobyl, which I believe was made by the same people who are making this show, and I thought it was, I mean, super bleak and probably affected me in the same way this show's going to, uh, but it, it was also really bloody good, so that's another factor that comes into it. Okay, so let's talk about the show. Uh, I kind of knew that Joel's daughter was doomed. I don't, what, did we even learn her name? I kind of knew she was doomed because... I've, I've never played The Last of Us, but I know it's a story about Joel and Ellie, and his daughter's not called Ellie. Maybe that's why they didn't tell us her name. Maybe they wanted us to be like, oh, that must be Ellie. But yeah, I kind of like also have this image of Joel as this kind of like grizzled guy who's lost. In fact, I might have even known that he lost his daughter somewhere in my subconscious. I might have heard that somewhere before. But man, did that not make it any less effective of a plot. They spend just the right amount of time with Joel and his daughter and their regular life for you to get kind of like a glimpse of, you know, what life is like for them before the outbreak. You get this impression of Joel as a very hard-working guy who doesn't take enough care of himself uh, and his daughter who very much wants him to take more care of himself and be happy and obviously their mother doesn't appear to be in their lives for whatever reason. I'm sure I'll learn more about that later as the show goes on. Also, just as an aside, no spoilers in the comments, please. If I'm, like, speculating about things, I, I'm rhetorically doing so. I don't want answers. Also, yes, unfortunately, I know one of the big spoilers from The Last of Us 2. I'm not going to say which one, no. Don't speculate. Anyway, because you know what The Last of Us is, you spend that entire time, like, even when it's not trying to build tension, it's still kind of, like, building tension because you know shit's wrong. Like, you hear, like on the radio at the start of the episode about how there's like civil unrest in in countries and it's like yeah that's probably not civil unrest that's probably people turning into mushrooms my guys and then they do it so well with just like you know the occasional helicopter going past and then speeding police going past and then 
you know, it's interesting that they've paired this back to 2003 because I have heard that originally it took place in like 2013 or something and they've removed it by 10 years. I think that makes it more plausible that news would travel more slowly about what's going on because in today's world, if you see speeding police cars going by constantly, there's going to be someone at the destination where the police cars are filming what's going on and you're going to know on your phone before the police do probably. So yeah, it's very, very interesting to kind of see it all starting to go off in the background and the entire time you're kind of tense watching like, oh no, when's shit going to hit the fan? Stop making me care about this kid. You've got that wonderful scene with the old lady. I mean, the first second you see the old lady, you're like, she's prime zombie bait, right? She's totally going to be munching on people before the day is over. And damn right she was. But you've got that wonderful scene of when um, Joel's daughter is looking through the DVD collection and you can just kind of see out of focus over her shoulder. The old woman is like starting to turn, but not in like... I'm going to stand up and come and take a bite out of your neck kind of turning, but just like something's happening inside her body. And as Joel's daughter leaves, you can see the dog becoming very concerned because of course dogs know more than people do about people. That's a trope. Is that real? Would that really happen? I guess it would. It's been a while since I've had dogs in my life. I was really worried that the dog was going to die, but the dog got out of there. Dog's safe. Dog ran away. I don't think he got munched. Some, some Something got munched. Sorry, we're jumping ahead now. Something got munched in, like, the driveway. I didn't quite see what it was. I'm hoping it wasn't a dog. Anyway, something I found really, like, kind of concerning was watching them sit down for a movie and just how relaxed and safe they feel while you know that outside the world is burning down around them. And then, of course, Joel gets that call from... Is it his brother? I don't know who... I don't remember his name, but who's in prison. And so he has to go and, like get him out of prison and then you just cut ahead to 2 a.m when joel's daughter wakes up hearing explosions and sirens and stuff and that entire scene that entire set piece of her discovering the old lady and the man and then joel turning up and them escaping in the car and trying to escape and finding roads blocked off and like finding danger and fucking airplanes falling out of the sky oh my god it was harrowing and amazing and of course the fucking scene with the the soldier when joel's daughter has twisted her ankle so joel's desperately trying to carry her to safety and they don't know where to go and they've gone down to the river and it's relatively quiet there except for this one fucking soldier who's get gets told to shoot a man and his injured kid because they might be infected and you're just like don't fucking do it buddy don't don't just follow orders and he's done it and you just know that the fact that Joel is carrying his daughter to safety and accidentally ends up having her as like a body shield and she takes all of her bullets, that's going to weigh on him for the rest of his life, right? Like, that is some extreme survivor's guilt right there. If that doesn't come up at some point, I will be extremely surprised. But oh my god, props to that kid actor dying. That was horrible. I mm, don't want to think about that again. No thanks. I mean, I hated it. I can't imagine what someone who has kids would feel like watching that scene. I imagine that would be like anathema to you. And then, um, I'm glad we didn't spend too long in Outbreakville because... That was like the hardest part <laughs> for my anxiety. It was, oh, I hate outbreak related apocalypse stuff. Like as much as I loved the set piece and admired it for how well it was made, I was just like, I hate everything about this. And I think I can take a 20 years later world, right? I think I can take a post-apocalyptic world where you've got settlements of survivors and zombies roaming the wilds. You know, I think I can deal with that, but if the entire show was Outbreak Time, I would not be watching it. I can tell you that right now. I should mention, I do find far-flung post-apocalyptic societies fascinating and really fun, like Destiny 2. I really enjoy Destiny 2's lore. Sadly, I do not enjoy Destiny 2's game <laughs> these days, but I really enjoy its world and lore. 20 Years Ahead is still a little bit too close to the bone for me, still a bit too real, still a bit too, what's the word, modern, a bit too current. Not not sci-fi enough, let's go with that. But again, I've heard good things about the show, so we'll continue down this road. Um, and I did really enjoy seeing, like, post-apocalyptic Boston. And, oh that, oh, that horrible scene where that kid collapsed in front of the gates and they take the kid in. And the entire time, you're supposed to be thinking, oh, they've got, like, a vaccine for this thing now and they're gonna, they're gonna help the kid out. But you, you know something's not quite right. Like, the way they strap the kid to the chair and they're like, oh, just so you don't fall out of it. Uh, and she's, like, trying to keep the kid distracted as, as the kid's getting their injections. He, like, 
this kid's dying, aren't they? <laughs> and then sure enough, uh, we cut to a 20 years later grizzled Joel, who is, it's showing how hard he buries his emotions by the fact that he's able to just chuck this kid's body into the fire uh, that we've just seen for, for money, because it's a job that he's doing. That is some damn snappy exposition right there. Just like, boom, Joel of the past, Joel now. This is how he's changed. He's also a drug dealer now. That's pretty dope, right? <laughs> Drugs, am I right, kids? No, don't, don't do that. The plot, the general plot is that he's trying to find his brother, right? Because his brother's gone out somewhere and hasn't come back. Uh, and he's, he's got this, uh, girl, lady, woman, friend, girlfriend, other half, wife with him. <laughs> I don't know their relation. I'm assuming she doesn't survive for too long either, because again, when I think The Last of Us, I think Joel and Ellie. I don't think Joel, Ellie, and Mother Figure. But to bring it back to Boston, I really enjoyed seeing what like that post-apocalyptic society looks like. It makes sense that the federal officials would be more fascist-like because of, you know, you could just see like the hard times breed hard ways of living kind of thinking behind them. And then you've got the Fireflies, uh, who are more of a group who are trying to stand up against them who want to make a better life for everyone, even amongst this, like, survival landscape of the zombies being a thing. And you could just see how that's going to play out, of, like, these two factions fighting against each other, and it's going to endanger everyone uh, with with the zombies still being a thing. I mean, we see that the city isn't impenetrable to the, to the infection, because they go down into the sewers and they find someone who recently died from it, right? I'm also curious if they're going to personify the zombies a bit more. Like, it's meant to be this mushroom thing that grows up inside them and takes control of their brains but like does that mean the mushroom has a degree of sentience that it's now like the way the old lady's eyes flicked to joel's daughter as it saw her and then went running after her like what is it that drives these zombies these clickers or whatever they're called to to try and like obviously we had that we had that little bit at the start of the episode where the guy was like it's going to its aim will be to spread as much as possible because that's what it does but like how does that translate into sentient thought of oh look there's someone nearby i can chase them and infect them like is this life like i know it's is it sentient life like how does it work i wonder if that will ever be explored in more detail anyway we're introduced to ellie who is chained up to a radiator and you know you can kind of figure out why like they're testing if she knows her name and if she can say uh, if she can count to 10 clearly, uh, because she's probably infected, right? And of course, at the end of the episode, you learn that she is, but for some reason, it doesn't affect her. I know this is something I didn't know about The Last of Us. I didn't know that Ellie was like this patient zero for, for someone who's actually immune to it. But I will say I did have my suspicions about that long before it ever got revealed, because there was a lot, there was a big deal made, uh, of her, uh, from the Fireflies, about how she's super important, she's like the only thing that matters, I'm thinking, well if she's the only thing that matters in this world of, you know, incurable zombie plague, then clearly she's the cure. But of course circumstances have her pairing up with Joel, who very much does not want to have a kid of the same age of his young daughter who he has PTSD about following him around, and it's going to be interesting to see how that relationship unfolds as well. And uh, oh, I one last thing, I really love the aesthetic of like the overgrown mossy skyscrapers. I do wonder how fast that moss would grow in 20 years. Like, would it really get all the way to the top of those skyscrapers? Would the skyscrapers be looking quite as dilapidated as they are? I feel like that would be more of a 100 years from now thing than a 20 years from now. But I'm sure the people who actually make this show and world know more about that kind of thing than I do, because they probably did some research. Actually, now that I think about it, they probably looked at places like Chernobyl. Ah, a fun tie in there. Anyway, that's gonna do it for me. I don't know how fast I'm gonna get through this series. I'm probably not gonna watch it when I come from home from work late at night again because that was clearly a mistake. Uh, I will do it in daylight when I've got lots of daytime ahead of me to go and distract my brain about other things. That sounds like the way for me to watch this show. Thank you for watching. I will see you again whenever I next get around to torturing myself with episode two. Hello! Oh dear, let's try that again. And as Ellie's daughter, Ellie's daughter?